Hi, uh, I'm Eddie. I'm Eugene. And we are the Middle Aged Barbarians. That's who we are, yes. Okay, well, today we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, world building, but rather than being very specific, we're going to try to get a vibe about it. Because sometimes one gets a little bit obsessed about the kind of world one wants to build. And you like make everything like super, 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 super specific. I have no idea what you're talking about. What? No, that being super, super, super specific and doing everything ahead of time. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's not you at all. Like yeah. th this big, huge binders of stuff. <laughs> yeah, nothing like that. You you gotta rather than that. Remember, it's, it's kind of a rule. Try to think, just make what is needed and what the players will see. And speaking of that. We'll talk a little bit about some uh, lines you can take of stuff that you can think about. Not even be very, very specific. Just think them about a little bit and then grow from there. So the first thing we like to talk about is the mystery about the world. How much do the players actually know about the world they're in? You as the DM, you know everything. You're God, but do your players come from a little, little town that not much is known about the world at large, or...? I mean, if I'm the son of a farmer and I'm trying to go out and make a name for myself, how much do I really know? Exactly. Or perhaps this is like a kind of a more urbane adventure and you're like in a big, big city and you have access to knowledge, general knowledge. Obviously, mystery is important because it's part of exploring the... Exploring is part of what's important in this game, but... Make, realize that. Realize how much in the dark you're going to keep your players at. Are you from a guild? Are you from a group of scholars? A yeah. College of bards? Or where, yes. where did you learn to do what you do? Exactly. And that's also important because sometimes even between the same players, some know stuff that the other players do not know. And even they can role play that, acquiring that knowledge. You know, the, the thieves, the, the person from the thieves guild knows stuff that the farmer does not know. And, it's, it's, it enriches the world. The second thing I like to talk about, and um, this is kind of a pet th theme for me, but it's power. Power is in a little bit of politics. I mean, let's not get into very uh, complicated and controversial topics, but rather think about how much is the power of the land present in your campaign? Will the players be patrons of, uh, I don't know, a local nobleman? Or actually seeing the noble persons around the town, the, the, the place they are, is like super important, like super, it's a big deal. Or they're just, oh yeah, they're, the count is over there just chilling. It, it reminds me from, um, from the movie of Monty Python and the Quest of the Holy Grail. They're just in the countryside and you have a couple of peasants like digging through filth and mud. And they're like, oh, this is a really good mud. Blah, blah. And King Arthur's just riding in the back with his posse. And they look over and he's like, oh, I'm your king. And they get into this whole debate, like, why are you my king? Because some woman threw a sword at you? That's no, that's no way of making a government. <laughs> that's, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Or perhaps you have some unusual sort of governments, like, I don't know, like a land ruled by mages or a land ruled by a, a cult. Even in this world, which actually would make sense because the actual rulers would have magical powers that could make, that could be interesting. Or like an evil dragon polymorphed into a person who's amassed so much power that he's just been ruling for many, many, many years and nobody knows. Yeah, exactly. And that, and that goes back to mystery. That would be like a super cool mystery of the party to realize. The, or big, the big reveal. Yeah, he's been a dragon all along. That makes sense. And yeah, so yeah, how, how, does, how does it work? How, how accessible it is? It's very important. I mean, obviously, if your campaign does not take place in places where it matters, doesn't matter, but sometimes you, you get like really, you could get really unexpected things. Let's say you have a government that likes taxing everything. You go out of the dungeon, surprise, oh. <laughs> the taxman's there and they're like, yeah, do we have a per percentage on your yeah. loot. We need to count up all your coins and bounty and see how much you're going to pay the king in taxes. <laughs> yeah, and, and, I mean, it's, it's, it could be part of the conflict and fun. So yeah. Now, another thing we like, I like to talk about is, um, well, I, I, as a shorthand, I call it food as treasure, meaning how, is, how complicated is basic survival? Because sometimes your campaign could be focused on that. Maybe you live like in a desert wasteland and there's no food. 
and actually acquiring food is part of the of the adventure or well darkson has like those real strict starvation rules if you don't drink water in a day you start losing i don't, know if I, I don't remember if it was like your stats start getting affected and you get fatigued and exactly like three days and you're dead so you gotta you gotta figure it out you gotta figure it out yeah water water i mean getting like a big cache of water is a big amount of water is like it's a big deal so me yeah think about it or maybe just live like oh it doesn't matter although i just envisioned water world the opposite no. <laughs> papers treasure so yeah treasure can take many forms and and it's very interesting to see how you can change the tone of your world depending on the of these sorts of things because because otherwise maybe it's just a little bit generic sometimes. Or generic is not bad, it's just different. Well, it could be a motivator, right? To, to figure out instead of offering them gold or a legendary item, hey, there's like an oasis at the end of the desert, but there's this terrible beast in front of it. What are you gonna do? Yeah. And you gotta survive. Sure. But what about what about like magic? How would you handle magic? Oh, yeah, magic is, is also very, 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 a very, very big deal in the same way. If you're trying to make it focus on survival, perhaps you have to change a little bit the rules because sometimes some very easy items or easy magical spells would surpass this problem. You, just, you can have a decanter of endless water. Yeah, it's, no, it doesn't. It's not endless <laughs> anymore. It's like water for one person, and, and you can ration it and maybe sort of survive with one, but it's not enough. Like you said, the oasis is good or. This idea is good and yeah, stuff like that. Or f endless food, yeah, does not make sense. Maybe like an, it could be like an epic reward getting that because- A scroll of hero's feast. Yeah, it would be like a big deal. You can feed the whole town and, and save the town with one. that. So yeah, you can think a, a little bit about everything in that sense, G give it another, a different edge. And keeping on with magic, it's the question, how common is magic? Do like regular peasants know what a magical sword does or magical potions are? Have they seen them? Have they not? Do they know what a, the actual things that a wizard or spellcaster do or they just make up superstitions? And how easy would be it for your players to acquire uh, magic themselves? That's another vector that you can change and move around a little bit. I mean, are there like clerics for hire that you can just go and buy like a scroll of healing or maybe hire them to raise dead? Like how complex would that be in, in, in your world or how mainstream? You could have like little cleric clinics everywhere around and, and they mainstream healing and yeah, that, that's actually, buffs. Yeah, that's actually something that, that could be pretty cool. You can make uh, a sort of simulation of the modern world with easy access magic. Like uh, digging Pokemon healing centers, but yeah. like for adventurers. Imagine like a... Uh, and it's always the same cleric. <laughs> just with a different teleport. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I mean, there's no... You can make a funny campaign. It, it, it works. Yeah, or something like, I don't know, like vending machines that give you potions. That would be pretty, pretty fun, but <laughs> it's a different tone, as you can see, from the gritty, yeah, surviving this. If you don't drink enough water, you're going to die, to... Oh yeah, there's a healing potion store uh, around the corner. You got a couple of gold, I just want to pop this potion out of the machine. Yeah, yeah and drink it and, and it's cool. So yeah, it gives you a different ambience. And finally, remember something that's very important about the building of your world. Not everything is the mechanics. It's not everything is the numbers and the die rolling. I mean, it's obviously very important. It's part of the, of the hobby, but sometimes you gotta think on some more uh, meta stuff, like prestige on the society you've built. Perhaps if your campaign has a very social aspect with the world, it's more important for the players to earn prestige than, I don't know, a billion gold coins that they cannot do anything with. I mean, <clears throat> maybe it can be like a title of nobility or the role we were talking about before. Maybe he gets known in different, what do you call these, guilds. So then when he goes to a new town, he doesn't have problems looking for a fence or somebody who wants to purchase like some black market goods off of him because they already know who he is. And that's the reward. Maybe there's like a, a, a mythical pass between each of the guilds, a token that says, oh, you're a member of, uh, you're good with this guild. And yeah. if you get them all, you get something that has no mechanical power per se, but it's it's cool. It makes you feel better. Yeah. Or you could have maybe like a, a couple of fanboys show up and want the big bad fighter, teach them how to do some tricks or something. And Oh my God, that sounds so cool. 
or a bard can go to a town and they'll be covering one of his one of his songs or one of his shows and yeah. they can pay him royalties. That's that's very modern. <laughs> that, but yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, 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 you get you get your family. Yeah, of course. They see them. Oh yeah, yeah I'll give you a part of the coins because it's your song. Yeah, yeah that's, that'd be cool. That sounds pretty cool, yes. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, we can make more stuff. Just not not with the coins, not just the magic items. You can send other words your way, the way of your players. And to close with the vectors that I like to talk about is history, the history of the world. Not just what the general knowledge, but other mysteries in the history, stuff that people don't know about, would like to know, or you just put them there so your players find them out. I mean, it it could be something like there are ruins and nobody knows what, what the ruins. Are. Are from like actual like actual history from the actual world. So maybe that's part of the, the fun that your players can look around, find yeah. about history. How many civilizations have come and gone just because your current era is like the most powerful that you know? You have no idea how many how many have been before you. Exactly. Um, those, those ruins can even be of a different race or a different species, or and they come back, and that's the adventure, <laughs> and that's. That's cool. So yeah, so to speak, uh, what do you think would be like the general baseline, dude? Like, how would you say it would be the generic world we talk about in in this instance with this sort of things that that we just mentioned? I mean, I've I've always thought of like, I mean, Lord of the Rings. I mean, it's cliche. It's like everybody's gonna say, oh, it's Tolkien. I mean, yeah, but Lord of the Rings, I think, is a great inspiration or one of the main inspirations. That, I mean, I know there's a lot of influence from like the Conan the Barbarian series, not just in Dark Sun, but in general with this whole fantasy. And, yeah. and I mean, that itself is based on other stuff. It's based on like medieval stories and it's based on legend and mythologies and all that. Uh, yeah. But I'd have to go like Tolkien. I'd love to play Narnia once, make a world <laughs> that would be Narnia. Very cool. But to see that the contrast, uh, Tolkien is kind of low magic. Magic is kind of unknown. There's only one wizard, which is like... There's a couple of them. There's a couple of them, but there's <laughs> like one main wizard, and he's very mysterious, whereas in Narnia... Oh, magic is everywhere. Magic is everywhere. Like, one of the main characters is Sat is a Satyr. Satyr? Yeah. Sat Satyr? <laughs> it's a fawn. It's a fawn, yeah. That's a better, better, better way to put it. Better term to use. And you, you have this... And the evil witch who controls the land and has everything in a frozen wasteland. Well, I mean, that's just one book. There's, I think, seven. Yeah, seven of them. Seven yeah, you lent them on them back in the day. I read awesome. them. If you haven't read Narnia, read them all. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty interesting to think about different sorts of fantasy because sometimes we get a little bit stuck in the, in the general, but you can go to very, very weird places. Let's say something like... Well, we spoke already about survival, but let's say something more different. Let's say something, I don't know, what would be like kind of the weirdest scenarios you can think about, changing some of these vectors we just talked about? You know, I've never played in it, but I've always thought it was interesting. Um, like Spelljammer. Oh, yeah. The, the, like that whole space pirate, kind of like psionic campaign. We've never played it. I've never played it. But I always thought that was really weird and interesting. Interesting doing that sort of stuff, yeah. Or something like, um, yeah, I've always, I always use this example. There's in this campaign setting, there's a city ruled by necromancers who are not evil necromancers. They're kind of ambiguous, but they become rulers of the land because uh, disaster strikes and they, a lot of refugees come to their, to their hold and they, well, we'll just make a city. And part of the rules of the city is if you die there, you become a zombie or a skeleton, and you work for the for the for the government there. And they solve kind of some of the. It's kind of sort of a communist utopia in a way because they solve the problem of labor. In a way, it's very odd, and you can go to these very very unusual places. It's kind of the world we. Live. It's kind of the part of the appeal of what we do. I can just imagine a party of clerics riding up with with their holy smites and just ruining everything they work for. And they would be, and they're kind of, they're supposed to be the good guys. Yeah. But it's kind of ambiguous because are they the good guys? But they're actually messing up the, a social structure with people. The living live pretty good lives because they don't have to work and toil the land. So you're... I think another thing is when you go into these world building details, I mean, you got to have a, like a general idea. I know it's going to be weird coming from me, but you don't have to have 
all the nitty gritty worked out. I mean, I remember one campaign I was in, there was like a train system, but it wasn't like a steam technology carbon based. They would have elementals fueling the engine car and that would pull everything along. So you substitute like this tech magic. And I mean, maybe one of your players will be like, but how is that working? Why is that doing that? What's the deal? Explain it. But I think most of us are just there for the cool narrative and describing something fantastical and, and enjoying it. Yeah, traveling rather than being a, a, a thing of many, many days, you just, oh yeah, you can travel in one day to the next city, it doesn't matter. Just hop on the train and, and you go. And that's what's very, very important that that's what we'd like to close with. Remember, the main focus of this is fun for the whole group. As Dungeon Masters, this sort of stuff is what we live for. I mean... <laughs> if you can hear a player gasp, like audibly gasp with, oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's like, I got you. I got you. Yeah, of course. But, yeah, don't sacrifice the details. And though there's a major sin, we'll talk about sins in some other episodes, but there's a, a very big sin that a lot of our DMs are guilty of which is railroading. You try to force them to do what you want so you can show them your cool stuff. No, it's, they have to explore it themselves. Yeah, yeah I've, 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 I've done that. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, that's why I tend to go more freeform. But at the end of the day, remember, everything is for fun. There's fun in creating, but there's also fun in playing. And try to keep a balance about that. Yeah. And, so, keep, and keeping tabs on what your players know and don't know and why they know it. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, this is this is this is part of the deal. That's what I'm guilty of because I always forget and reveal stuff that I shouldn't reveal because I'm that sort of person. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's all in good fun. And well, this is it for us for this episode. So, yeah. will you rage responsibly? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, leave your comments, uh, any suggestions, any questions you may have. Uh, leave them below. Like, subscribe. And yeah, raise responsibly. Roll the dice!